The Nothing Phone 2A is actually kind of good. Okay, so I've been using this phone for a few days now and the phone I came from was of course the Galaxy S24 Ultra and these devices have quite the price difference. I mean, the Nothing Phone 2A retails in the US for $350 and the S24 Ultra retails for $1,300. So nearly a thousand dollars more than the Nothing Phone. And while this video is not gonna be a comparison between these two phones, I do think that the Nothing Phone 2A is not worth a thousand dollars less than the S24 Ultra. It's honestly, Pretty, pretty dang good for the price. Now, before making this review, I made sure not to watch any other reviews that could, you know, impact my opinion on this device. So uh, this is just my thoughts and my experience using the Nothing Phone 2A as my daily device. Now, I had the opportunity to use both the Nothing Phone 1 and the Nothing Phone 2. And what I'll say is that the Nothing Phone 1 was great, except I had one main complaint and that was that it was kind of underpowered as far as processing goes. But of course, they then fixed that with the Nothing Phone 2 when they introduced a better processor. And the Nothing Phone 2A being positioned in between the Nothing Phone 1 and the Nothing Phone 2, I was kind of wondering if it would have performance issues, and it actually did at first. So on day one, the first day that I switched to this device, of course, you know, it has to set up everything. It's installing all of your apps, it's configuring. So you can kind of expect it to be a little bit slower and, you know, not at optimal performance. And you know, that was definitely true because this phone was lagging a, a good amount. I was, I was low key kind of disappointed. I was like, dang, this, this phone is not as smooth as, as I, as I hoped. But then I went to bed, I woke up, picked up the phone and all of a sudden it was like a massive difference because it was all of a sudden smooth. And so I think it just goes to show that yes, you really do need to wait for a phone to finish setting up and configuring before you can truly judge how well it performs because now this phone is very smooth. Now it's not perfect. You know, this still is a $350 phone. So like, for example, when I open up the camera, you kind of got to be a little bit patient with it. It'll, it'll, uh, take a second to actually get it up and running. But in just like my normal general day-to-day -day usage, you know, going throughout the operating system, going throughout different apps, it is very smooth. And especially for a $350 device, it's, it's impressive. Oh, and I think it is also important for me to note that my specific unit is the one with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. But I believe if you purchase the phone in the US, you get 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. And you know, when I use my phone, I don't do anything too intensive. Like I'm not a big mobile gamer. I don't typically edit videos on my phone. I'm, I'm really just doing, you know, normal phone tasks. And so I can't really speak for like very intensive tasks, but for those normal tasks, it did perform very well. And you know, probably the two most important things to me when it comes to a smartphone is performance but also software. And I'm very happy to say that along with having good performance, this phone also has one of my favorite softwares of any smartphone. Because you know, it is fairly stock Android. Like, you know, you, you swipe down your notification panel and your quick settings menu. It looks pretty close to the same as like a Google Pixel, which is great. And there's no bloatware, which is also great. But the thing that I'm excited about is just the super awesome, customization options that nothing provides. Because typically when I set up a home screen on an Android phone, I use a launcher to be able to set it up exactly how I want. So if we look at my S24 Ultra right here, you can see what I'm talking about. But with the nothing phone, I don't have a custom launcher on here. This is literally just the normal nothing launcher that comes on the phone. And one thing that I love about this is that it allows you to install custom icons by default. So typically where I would have to install a launcher or maybe an additional app to get custom icons, this phone just lets you install them and it just works. And nothing even has their own custom icon pack that they made and it actually is able to make every single icon custom. You know, sometimes when you set custom icons, they don't have icons for every single app that you have. Well, nothing's icon pack forces every single app with like an algorithm to be a custom icon. And so the custom icons along with their custom widgets as well, just make this phone 
super cool. And of course it is kind of an aesthetic that you have to like, but I mean, good for me. This is an aesthetic that I really like. So we have good software, good performance, but what about the battery life. And you know, I actually kind of came into this experience expecting the battery life to be good because it does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is, you know, a pretty big battery. And, you know, it's not a super powerful device. So I can kind of assume that it's not gonna be using a lot of power and hence getting, you know, more battery life. And I'm happy to say that the battery life on this phone has been great. Like I'm probably averaging maybe eight to eight and a half hours of screen on time pretty much every day. And so for pretty much my entire time using this phone, I made sure not to charge it during the day. So I would just wake up with a full battery and then just go throughout my whole day. And I had uh, one or two days where I actually ended the day with 50% or more battery life. Okay, I think it's time we brought up one of my favorite things about this phone because of course we can't talk about the nothing phone without bringing up the design. And of course this can be a very subjective thing. Like some people might hate the design of the nothing phone, but personally, I love it. Like, especially in a world where every single smartphone nowadays kind of just looks a little boring in a way. Like this phone just goes out there and makes it look so stinking cool. Like, especially being someone who loves transparent tech, like this is just perfect. And you know, specifically uh, with the Nothing Phone 2A, the device we're talking about, it has like this new kind of camera arrangement with the phone. And at first I wasn't super sure about it. I was like, Honestly, I thought it looked kind of weird at first, uh, but you know, now that I've got to use it and hold the phone, I actually really like it. And in some cases, I kind of think it looks better than the Nothing Phone 1 and the Nothing Phone 2. Now, yes, this phone is plastic. It has plastic sides, it has a plastic back, but honestly, I feel like this is an excellent example of you know not using premium materials, but still being able to have an excellent phone design and a, a excellent phone appearance. Because a lot of times when a phone is plastic, it can, you know, kind of look cheap and feel cheap, but this phone does not look cheap. It just looks cool, you know? And one great thing that they did here that you can't typically do when you have, you know, metal rails on a phone is they made the rails of the phone white. And I just think that's super cool because you pretty much never see white sides on a phone. And it just kind of gives it like a stormtrooper look. And I love that. Now, another thing that this phone has done really well is actually the display. And you know, it's not gonna be as good as a flagship phone. Of course, it is still a $350 phone, but for that $350, you're getting a 120 Hertz AMOLED display with even bezels, which honestly, like what, what more can you ask for at this price point? Now you might be thinking at this point, like, all right, Parker, you're literally only saying good things about this phone. Like what's the catch? And like, honestly, I don't know. I don't, I don't think there really is a catch. I think it's just kind of a, a good phone. <laughs> now, if I want to throw some nitpicks out there and just give some things that I have found that I don't like, like, okay, um, the fingerprint scanner is a little bit low, which has been this true on both the Nothing Phone 1 and the Nothing Phone 2. Like, it's kind of at an awkward position. And then the cameras, you know, aren't anything crazy. I mean, we don't even have a telephoto camera at all. I mean, the front facing camera can only record up to 1080p video. Uh, the rear facing camera can record 4K 30, but not 4K 60. And like overall, it's like a okay camera as far as I've tested, but it's nothing like insane. But then one thing that actually is kind of not great, honestly, are the speakers. And initially, actually, I thought the speakers were like literally like <laughs> kind of trash, honestly. And I, it's because of this weird reason. And so I, I obviously upload videos to TikTok a lot. And so I'll record videos, upload them, and then watch them back on my phone. And when I did that, it sounded like really bad. And so for like days, I just thought the speakers on this phone sucked. <laughs> and until I watched back one of my videos on YouTube shorts and suddenly, it sounded way better. And so it turns out that for whatever reason, videos on TikTok, or at least my videos on TikTok, just sound bad on this phone. Like, I don't know, kind of weird. Now I will say the speakers still aren't, you know, super great. Like if, if I compare, especially obviously, S24 Ultra is way more expensive, of course. But if I compare like listening to music on either of these phones, like it's obviously like 
fairly significantly worse than, you know, my more expensive phone. But other than that, I mean, uh, we have no wireless charging, which is, you know, kind of a nice to have feature that, you know, isn't super expected at this price point. But yeah, overall, this phone is great. I mean, will I be switching back to my S24 Ultra? Yes, I mean, the S24 Ultra is obviously a better phone, but for the price point, this phone nails it. I mean, I would probably say that the Nothing Phone 2A is giving me about 65 to 70% of the experience of my S24 Ultra, and it's only 27% of the price. So that's that's a heck of a deal. But anyways, I'm very excited for Nothing's future just because they bring something different to the table, something nice, something that is just cool and exciting and like different. And I, I really like it, I really, really do. So yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other questions about the Nothing Phone 2A, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. But other than that, we'll see you guys in the next one.